Hi, I'm Darren from Isotonic Studios and welcome to this week's video. A little bit different to usual, as normally I'll start on a Monday thinking about which device I want to show off, build a live set around it, and then work through the features with a kind of loosely written script. This week, however, we're focusing on Follow Scene XL, the latest and greatest update to one of our best-selling uh, products. And I haven't built the set. It's actually been supplied to me and it came in as a support request. So I've got to give a shout out to Zach Smith of the Indian Creek Christian Church in Indianapolis. And the set itself contains content from multitracks.com. They've been a great supporter of ours, and in fact, Christian Ponsford from there has done some really good educational videos. They put together backing track uh, packs effectively, and that's what this set is here. Zach uses this uh, in his church, and in the past has tried all sorts of different things to have play and go. And that's effectively what Follow Scene XL does. It was originally designed to perform automatic follow actions on clips, working down a set um, from a DJ point of view, because I, I wanted to be able to take a long track and cut it up into phrases and then mix it seamlessly with other tracks uh, using an APC-40. Effectively as it works, it's very simple um, and it takes a lot of setup away uh, from being able to configure this set. The tracks that Zach has got are all based on groups. Uh, let's just expand this one. And they're multi, multi tracks, as you can see there. So that whole group is going to play at once. And then further down the set, we have the next song and so on and so forth. It's a pretty cool way of, uh, of doing things. Now, over on the left hand side, we have some markers, and these are intended to give a visual cue as to where you are in the scene. And over here, we've got the scene names. Now, when I got this set, let's have a look at the second one. Zach had uh, entitled the first scene of the new song with the name. And then we also have the BPM and the time signature written into the scene name. When you trigger those, when? It will change the tempo and it will change the time signature. Three, four. So we've got that written into every uh, clip there. And we've also got, as you can see here, interlude and interlude and verse and verse. So they weren't uniquely named. Now I've worked through the first song and quite simply made them unique by just you know, abbreviating the song name, FYA, follow you anywhere, and then intro A, intro B, intro verse A, verse B. I've removed the time signature and BPM from each of these, but I've left them in place for the yellow clips. Now the yellow clips, uh, sorry, yellow scenes are where Zach wants to be able to jump to at any point uh, whilst playing this particular song. And he wanted to be able to do it on the fly via MIDI, and at the end of the currently playing scene. And so in Follow Scene XL, you have this expand button and you have clip name options. And we've given up to eight clip name options. And if you look here, we've got all of the names of all of the scenes. Now, one thing to note, uh, let's just do this. Follow intro complete A Z. So I'll just change it, just randomly. Now, the names in here are based on grabbing them from the scene names when the device starts up. So now, FY intro A doesn't exist anymore, AZ does. So to update that, you can either save your set or simply press the isotonic button. And now, follow intro AZ. Let's just solo this particular one, and we'll go and have a look at the clip. One, two, intro, three, four, five, six. Excellent. So part of the pack that uh, comes from uh, Multitracks includes those guide clicks. Um, so it will tell you and warn you in advance of what's coming next. And what Zach and his team have is their sound card will output the, the guide cues and the click track to a separate out so that they can hear it and they can 
obviously keep him time. Now, the challenge is how do we actually update so that these are available for us to use? Because when they're filled in here, if I press the orange button, what will happen is it will go to here and it will populate the queue selected effect. And what will happen is whatever I choose and press the orange button for, at the end of the current playing clip, currently playing clip, the scene chosen will trigger. If I want to do it a little bit more immediately, observing the global launch contourization, I would just press the green button. Of course, everything within here is MIDI mappable as well. So to populate here, what I'm going to do, I've got my three yellow clips, which is exactly the three options that Zach wants to be able to jump to at any point. And I'm going to go Control R, Control C. I'm going to go to my guide, guide Q clip, Control R, F A for follow action, and I'm going to put it in brackets. And now, when I trigger this clip, uh, actually, if I clear these here, what's going to happen is I'm going to have that. One, two. Intro three. And now I've effectively got my next part uh, to jump to. Now you will notice that it wasn't really very smooth. There's a hell of a lot going on in this set. I mean, how many tracks is that? That's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, hand alone there. Yeah, a lot. So I'm gonna take that trigger time and I'm gonna increase it to about 20. It's just a rough guess. What that will do is that will effectively bring the trigger point of the next scene a little bit earlier so that it doesn't fall behind. Let's just check that. One, two, intro, three, four, five, six. As you can see, the green of the next scene to be triggered came along intro. at the right point. And if we leave things, it's just gonna continue working down the set, triggering the next scene based on the length of the currently playing clip. But if you notice, once I'd... One, two, intro, three, four, five, six. And the clip name options disappeared again. So, let's just fill in the rest there. So I'm going to R, Control C, go back to my original clip, Control R, space, Speech brackets, enter, and the third option. So one, two, three, uh, control R, control C, back up, control R, space. So now this clip one, two, actually gives me three zero, options. Three, four, five, six. Ah, including jumping to the ending. So I want that option, those three options, to actually be available all the way through the song. So I'm going to go to Control R, I'm going to go Control Copy, Control C, the down arrow, and Control V. Down arrow, Control V, and it takes just a moment for me to work through my entire song until I reach the end. So now, any one of these clips, let's trigger the scene. One, two, intro, three, four, five, six. Intro. Intro. As you can see, completely hands-free. I've got my cues in my monitors, the click track as well, and it will just progress down my song, giving me these three options that I can jump to at any point. So in fact, let's go for the bridge. And at the end of this currently playing clip, it's gonna trigger the FYA bridge down. Let's have a look, there you go, okay. Next bit, this is the ending, and there's 
going to be a natural break at that point. So what I want to be able to do is utilize one of the other follow actions, which is called cue next. So basically what happens when this particular clip ends, if I change it to cue next, is that with this and this unlit, the clips that are playing will continue to play out and the transport will continue to play. If I want the end of this clip to stop all of the other clips, I change it to stop. And if I want the transport to stop playing, I change it to stop. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the clips to play out their natural end because actually they've got a tail that's longer than this particular clip. But I could do a couple of things. I could remember that every time I need to get to uh, the queue next, I could MIDI map this individual queue next button, or Command M, I could go to the floating window, and within the floating window, we've given one control, uh, let's Command M, and you can MIDI map that singular button, and use that with a foot switch, and choose between, let's uh, well, next again, perhaps, and if you notice, when I flip between the two, it changes the follow action. I'm gonna come back though, because I'm not gonna remember that, especially with everything else going on. So I actually want this clip to actually automate the change from next to cue next. So let's go into the clip itself. We'll open the envelopes and follow scene. And we want the master follow action. And if you notice there, as I hover over the automation line, as I change it, it basically means that that is going to override whatever I've selected via MIDI or via the mouse for that clip only. As you can see, the clip envelope has changed and now we're queued up ready to play the next song. Now, the next song I'd have to select generally, but if I go Command and N, this play button here is the one that realistically you'd match to a MIDI controller and it's what would trigger the next action. I'm gonna go back now, because now we've got our entire song it's uh, playing sequentially through. We've got the options to jump around in the song. Um, let's see what's going on a slightly bigger scale. We have this large floating window, if you like, and everything within it is clickable. So we could use it as a bigger display. Now, the point of it originally was quite simply that you'd have it on your screen and you'd be able to see it slightly further away. Um, it's just a little bit clearer. However, what you'll notice here in this latest version, we've already installed Mirror, which is an app from Cycling74, available from the iTunes store. So on an iPad, you can connect to your live set, effectively, through an ad hoc network. And that will mean that that particular floating window will show up on the iPad but they've taken it a step further with Mirror Web. Now, I'm gonna go over to this computer, and let's open Chrome, Google Chrome, and in there, we're gonna put that web address, which is http Ooh, Nearly got it, excellent, 8086, lovely. Enter the details of the Max host to connect to, connect. And there you have it. So we again have this same principle and changing it on one computer changes it on the other. So you have the visibility of what's happening, but you also have control of what's happening as well. So in fact, I don't even need it open here. I can have it on a separate computer as well. Pretty cool stuff. Some of the more advanced elements of Follow Scene XL. When we come back, 
we're going to look at these bail clips and how we can use them with Clipex Pro to reset the various values within our song and move on quickly. Thanks for watching. Cheers.